Servus, grüß Gott bei Namen. Welcome to the next round of Kaufverband North America Ease. Today we're going to show you how to make Kehspätzle. Southern Germany and Austria's answer to mac and cheese. Kehspätzle, Kehspatze, Kehspotzen, or Kehsknepfle, depending on what region of Bavaria or Austria you're in, are enjoyed all year round, but especially at this time of the year, the Lenten season, the Fastenzeit, because it's a meatless dish. Kehspätzle is considered the national dish of the Allgäu also, by the way. But before we get started with our Spätzle dough, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the ingredients you'll need. First, we're going to start with all-purpose flour. Any good brand of all-purpose flour will do the trick. And I have here 500 grams of flour, or about four cups. Next, you'll need a good big pinch of regular table salt. This is probably about yeah, a teaspoon or so, I'd say. Um, five eggs about hmm, six ounces or about three quarters of a cup of water. Now the water's, water amount is always variable depending on the flour and how much water the dough actually takes. You may need a little more, you may need a little less. Um, that comes with practice. Uh, the next thing you'll need, of course, if you're gonna make cheese spätzle is cheese. So let's talk about cheese. First thing you should remember is if you can try and get imported cheese. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it. The difference is amazing for several reasons. Not only because of taste, but in the way it melts in overall consistency. I have here an Appenzeller cheese, I have an Emmentaler, and I have a Gruyere. Um, if you can find them, use them by all means. Uh, domestic cheeses seem to have not melt as nicely, uh, and the taste isn't there. Um, if for really authentic Kehspätzle, you need something called Weisslacher. Unfortunately, it's not available here. It's an Algoya cheese. It um, is stinky. It resembles Limburger. It's a Schwinkete. Um But like I said, it's hard to find here. But there is a good substitute. If you can find beer case, beer cheese, that's a good substitute. You can use that in in your mixture of cheeses also for, for uh, Kehspätzle. Now you can certainly use one of these exclusively for your Kehspätzle, but it's pretty traditional to use a mix of any typical kind of Kehse. And here I have about, mm, I'd say a pound, maybe up to a pound and a third or so of grated cheese. And you can see how it's grated. I used the largest hole on the grater for the cheese. So we may not use it all, but that's okay. Whatever's left over certainly won't go to waste. Next, you need a ton of onions. So I used for this portion, or these measurements, excuse me, four large onions, this size or even bigger. That's what it turns into. So this looks like a lot, but it's going to cook down to that. You want to brown them in butter, saute them in butter. Pro tip, you can do this a day ahead of time. This takes quite a long time. You want to saute them slow and low uh, to get that beautiful caramelizing effect. Whatever you do, don't minimize or take shortcuts on this step. It's well worth it. The end product really, really benefits from the taste of the caramelized onions. It's so typical of Kehspitz. Okay. Uh, next, you need a Spätzle hobel. I unfortunately do not have the technique to do it the way Schwäbische Omas used to do it or still do it nowadays. And I hear tell that Stefan Hargreaves, our Gal Fotograf, can do it this old fashioned way, which is to spread the Spätzle dough on a board and using a type of scraper or a long bladed knife, scrape it into the water with lightning speed to get the typical. Schwäbische, um, thin Spätzle, kind of, for lack of a better term, wormy looking Spätzle. Uh, the, in the Allgäu and Austria and the rest of Bavaria, more typically you'll see Spätzle that many purists say aren't Spätzle at all, but are Knipfle, which means little buttons. And that's because they are made using a Spätzle hobel. And this kind of affair, you fill the little hopper here with the Spätzle dough and you 
go back and forth over a pot of salted boiling water. And that's gonna give you the typical shape for the spätzle we're gonna to make today. You can get these anywhere, just Google online. You can get them anywhere. Just, even Google spätzle maker, they come up anywhere. Or if you have kind of a gourmet kitchen place in your area, I'm, I'm sure they'll have it. They're, they're not hard to find. Okay, so give me a few minutes to clean up here. We'll start on our spätzle dough. See you back here in a few minutes. In the bowl here for our spätzle dough, we have our flour, salt, and eggs. Now we're gonna Turn the mixer on and begin to make our dough. And as I said, the water uh, amount is variable depending on the flour and kind of the consistency we want. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna start out on low speed. We have a little bit of water. If you want a richer Spetsly dough, you can replace the water with milk. Or you can use half water and half milk. It depends depends on your taste. Some people even put a grating of nutmeg in the dough. I prefer to keep it simple only because that's the way my mom used to make it and that's the way I learned. So. There we go. We'll pick up the speed a little bit. Sorry you guys have to put up with my annoyingly loud mixer. Remember it from the pretzel video. But it does the trick. Okay, we're going to add a little more water. Now you can mix this dough by hand too in a big bowl just like your mom and Oma used to do by simply stirring it with this thing that you were threatened with as a kid. Remember? Just a poplifty, just a simple wooden spoon. It's a good workout and it's the traditional way to do it. In the uh, interest of saving time though, and because I'm getting lazy in my old age, we're going to use the mixer. Take a look at our spätzle dough now. I added the full six ounces or three quarters of a cup of water and I determined that it did need a little more. It's still a little bit stiff. What we're looking for is a dough that falls slowly off of the wooden spoon, um, not one that's necessarily firm. We don't want it too runny either. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. See? Check the consistency after that. Our onions are going over there, sauteing nicely. I used a half a stick of butter, maybe a little bit more to saute that amount of onion. Okay, let's check the consistency with our wooden spoon. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Okay, want it to fall slowly off the spoon. Maybe use just a tad more water, just a little bit more I'm gonna add. Okay, we've got the right consistency now. I added just a little bit more water. Um, the dough looks great. What, you, what you're looking for also is for the dough to form air bubbles as it's mixing. If you see bubbles forming, that's a good sign. Bis der Teig blasen wird, as they say in German. You want the dough to 
bubble, or throw bubbles, the literal translation. So the dough looks good. We're gonna let it mix for a few more minutes. Now, if you were doing this by hand, it would probably take you a good 10 or 15 minutes to get the dough to the right consistency and to have it developed enough to bubble. So after this, after the dough's done, we're gonna rest it. Typically, you rest spets the dough 20 to 30 minutes before you um, make spetsle out of it. So in that time that it's resting, we'll turn the water on, the water can boil, and then we'll take it from there. The Spätzle dough looks good. Check it out. Nice, huh? That's what you want. It. I guess I added, maybe if I had to guess, maybe a tablespoon more of water. Like I said, it depends on the flour and how much water it's capable of absorbing. Some flours are stronger than others, but the, see, that's what you want. Nice, slow fall off of the spoon. Perfect, perfect. And if you look closely, you can see the, see there's a bubble, there's bubbles forming. This is how you do it by hand, like Oma used to do. Okay, that's good spätzle dough. We're gonna cover it with a plate and let it rest for um, you know, about a half an hour or so, and then we'll see you back then. Welcome back everybody, our spätzle dough has rested. Um, as you can see, it looks great. Uh, I filled the hopper of our little spätzle hobel here. Uh, it helps if you rinse it under cold water, that's a, another little bit of a pro tip. It makes it easier to uh, um, get the spätzle dough out of it. And uh, also you can dip a spoon or something, whatever you use, you're using to get the spätzle dough into the hopper. If you dip that in cold water too, it makes it a little bit easier for you. I find it does anyway. So our water's boiling. We're gonna give it a nice, generous dousing of salt, salted water, good, okay. Our onions are still going. Uh, yeah, we're ready to go. Oh, by the way, uh, whether you cover your spätzle dough in the interim while we're waiting with a, a plate or a, a towel or whatever, doesn't matter. Just the important thing is you keep it covered. Okay, so we're ready to go. Here we go. There's a little uh, hook here on the end. It just fits over the pot and we just back and forth. Our spätzle. Let's see. Yep, hopper's empty. There we go. Ready for the next batch. Put it over there. Okay, as soon as they swim to the top, they're pretty much ready. We're gonna let them float around in here for a little bit, make sure they're completely done. By the way, Spätzle in the Schwäbische dialect means little sparrows. And they get their name from the way they look when they're floating around in the boiling water like little sparrows flying around. Just a little fun tip, fun fact. Okay, we're gonna fish them out and put them in our spätzle bowl here that I brought back from Altstetten im Allgäu. Little shout out to the Altstädter Keramik. There we go. I think I got all of them. There. Now, we're gonna take some of our cheese mixture and sprinkle that over. And we're gonna do it just like this in layers until all of the dough is used up. So there we go. Mix that around a little bit. Just to get it melting. Put a little 
more in there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to load up the hopper and do the next batch. And we're going to do this all the way till the, the dough is, is used up in this kind of layering fashion. Spätzle, warm spätzle, hot spätzle, and then the cheese on top. So, I'll meet you back here when we're all done with our spätzle dough. There you have it, kids. There's our Kei spätzle. Uh, after we did all the layers, I did put it in a... 250 degree oven for about 10 minutes just to make sure that all the cheese is melted all the way through. Uh, I stirred it up a little bit. I did add um, a little bit of the caramelized onions too at that point and stirred them into the rest of the uh, Kei Schwetzle mixture and then at the end I put the remainder on top. So we're going to garnish it now with um, some fresh chives which is pretty typical. Oh, look how beautiful. Man, that looks good. Okay. Oh, looks like they all go eat. All right, time to try some. Oh, what, what do you serve Kei Spätzle with? Well, typically it's served with a salad, uh, any type of green salad or a gurken salat, a cucumber salad, anything like that. Um, it's certainly hearty enough on its own. Um, depending on where you go, it's often served with bread too. I've been to the Topfenalpe in Burgberg im Allgäu. I've been to the Altstädter Hof, the Sonthofer Hof in Oberallgäu. They all served it with some type of rye bread. So, uh, yeah, let's try it. Oh, man. Oh, baby. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Cue the happy chef noises, Maddie. Mm, harsh. Mm. Amazing. Just amazing. Mm, delicious. I hope you guys get a chance to try out the recipe. We'll have it online for you. Try the Kei Spätzle. The dough is very forgiving, so don't be afraid to try it. It's just delicious. You'll never have Kraft mac and cheese again once you eat this. So, with that in mind, Prost, bleib gesund alle miteinander. Bis zum nächsten Mal. And we'll see you again in the next round of Kaufebahn North America Eats. Prost. Und dann gut.